he was one of the earliest black scholars and for Queen's College he was the first black black student he matriculated in 1847 and left around 1850 and he he studied moral philosophy and he came with his family because he was and he was trying to fundraise for the for abolition of slavery and he was funded by the abolitionists to study soon after he left for Liberia because now it was like a free country for the freed slaves and he he worked in Liberia for 20 years as a professor in the University of Liberia and also as a priest and he lived in Liberia for the next 20 for about 20 years but at the end of his life he moved back to to the US and he continued working as a priest and also publishing in his field people like Du Bois who's a prominent scholar uh, who studied in Harvard have referred to Alexander Cromwell a lot in their work, and especially in his main work, The Souls of Black Folk. He talks a lot, and having been inspired by Alexander Cromwell, as Black and Tabs, we find that uh, despite the work he did, he's, he's, he's still considered less prominent, yet he's, he did so much in his field as a moral philosopher. And also, even within Black Studies, I think he, he's probably their father as as uh, Du Bois refers, refers to him as the father of that thinking and, and, and the mentor of many people like Du Bois. We are finding other people, or maybe two others or three others, who came earlier than him, but then they, we can't find records of having matriculated, matriculated and graduated. Those are the, like, the challenges of researching uh, black people then in the archives because of the politics of race, the politics of, of knowledge. But uh, Alexander Cramel still remains the first black person to matriculate and graduate at Queen's College. The Black and Tabs project was started in 2015, myself and uh, uh, my other co-founders, and we saw the need to start documenting ourselves and those and black alumni who've come to Cambridge before us, so that future generations of black students who come to Cambridge don't have to feel the loneliness and isolation that you do by because they will see themselves, they will see a history of other black students who studied in Cambridge. So Afua Sutherland is a playwright. Uh, she's Ghanaian in origin. Um, she studied at Homerton College and her, one of her legacies is that she actually helped to um, found the study of African performance, theatricality, and she helped to establish modern Ghanaian theatre. She had a cherished relationship with the late great uh, Maya Angelou um, during the years when Maya Angelou was actually living in Ghana in the 1960s. Her most important work was a play that she wrote called Edufa. Edufa is read all across the continent and it acted and enacted and reacted in, in plays. Um, the, I think the reason that it has such a broad resonance is because it is rooted in the community from which it emerges um, and therefore it has salience all across the African continent. But it is read far beyond that. Um, there's a street in the Netherlands called uh, Efua Sutherland Strat. <laughs> um, and so this is a work that it's just one of those books that is just cherished and understood and resonates with people on such a massive scale. And that just is a testimony to her genius but also to her ability to tap into the most important parts of human, human character. That getting the, the black female alumni, my MSA must have, has been much, much easier than the men. Because, and, and sadly it's because the women were so few. Women only went to three colleges before the 1970s. Mm -hmm. For instance, the first woman, black woman to study at Queens was Ama. Mm -hmm. She did a degree in medical sciences um, with a focus on gynecology and obstetrics. She works in London mm -hmm. as, a, as an obstetrician and gynecologist. Mm. And recently, I think in 2018, mm. the college honored her as a Life Honorary Fellow, yeah. which is one of, like, one of the most distinguished awards for what she did. Because while she was at Queens in 1980, she was first the first black woman to study at Queens, she was the first woman to captain any athletics team mm -hmm. in the history of the university. I think that's that's a big, that's a, that's a huge achievement. What else does she? Do? She got a full blue. Oh. Um, so she has one of those really amazing yeah. jackets that mm. you have to do really mm. intense uh, qualifications to get. So really yeah. impressive. 
And it's because of people like Ama, and I'm glad that the college did research about her. I was mm-hmm. working with Marisa when they, they, they did a whole, whole magazine about an alumni magazine cover with Ama. Mm-hmm. And I can remember how excited I was to see the magazine. I was yeah. like, oh my God, somebody studied here. Mm-hmm. This Ghanaian British woman. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, 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 I just met her. I was like, wow. So this that, that's the more reason why this project is so important. Mm-hmm. It's so that those aha moments have to be normalized. It's right. not like, oh my God, did this happen? No, it's like, I know this was here and I can do it because they did it. Right. Underlining how important representation is um, in, a, in a wider context and at a personal level, the reason why I applied to Queen's College was because I saw Jokey <laughs> on the website. I saw her um, around. I knew what her work, I was interested in her work. I saw myself at Queen's because I saw someone like myself at Queen's. And that's why the work is so important, I think. Yes, and I'm glad she came to Queen's and she became the president of the Black and Hub. But for me, it also shows why we need representation. If Because if we have more people that uh, prospective students can get on a website and see more black and brown people, they'll feel actually that place is for people like me. Mm-hmm. And they're likely to apply to Cambridge. But mm-hmm. many times, many stud- many very brilliant students don't apply to Cambridge because they just see people who don't look like themselves and they think mm-hmm. that's not my place and I'm not going to have mm-hmm. a good time mm-hmm. and I don't want to be there. So we've curated the work and we're really interested in uh, exhibiting the work all across Cambridge in multiple different forms. Um, we're really interested in larger than life exhibitions outside of the Senate House, for example, and working with each college to make sure that not only are they aware of their black can tubs, that they're highlighting and showcasing those legacies at every opportunity, whether it's um, portraits and pictures or other kinds of plaques, some kinds of memorial. We're, we're really interested in working with each college in order to do that. Um, but if you're not in Cambridge, you can also still uh, investigate the work that we've done because we've made it publicly available at our website, um, www.blackcantaps.com. <laughs>